EBMT meeting, I talked about about uh, virus-specific T-cell therapy and how uh, the approach using virus-specific T-cells was developed uh, primarily at the beginning for patients uh, after bone marrow transplant to prevent and treat uh, devastating viral diseases such as CMV and EBV. I then so walked through the history of that um, VST um, uh, approaches, which really started in the early 90s out of Seattle and St. Jude's. Um, and these days, we've really been able to broaden the applicability of these virus-specific T cells um, because we've been able to do rapid manufacturing um, approaches uh, using very little manipulation in the laboratory. And there is a new, um, what I like to call GMP in a box technology. Uh, one example of that is the Multaney uh, Prodigy system, uh, which really allows um, us uh, to rapidly expand uh, virus-specific T cells uh, when uh, the donor is seropositive for the virus of interest. So I walked through that history and, and showed how uh, if you give um, donor-derived virus-specific T cells to patients after bone marrow transplant as a preventative strategy, it's over 90% effective. If you give it to those patients who are um, already infected or have reactivated the virus, the efficacy ranges in the 70 to 90 plus range. So pretty impressive for uh, even against viruses where we lack um, conventional therapies. So right now the argument is, well, can we expand to any virus. Um, currently at our, at Children's National, we are exploring a six virus product targeting CMV, EBV, adenovirus, uh, parainfluenza virus, HHV6, and BK virus. Um, but we and others have expanded to multiple other viruses, including HPV, Zika virus, HIV, and uh, norovirus. We currently have a trial where it's just about to start. So obviously with the start of this pandemic, uh, those of us in the virus-specific T-cell field uh, felt we had the tools in place to develop a SARS-CoV-2 specific T-cell therapy. So I uh, walked uh, us through the uh, steps that we took uh, starting back in March 2020. Uh, Mike Keller and his team uh, here uh, developed uh, T-cells from convalescent donors. Most of them had had relatively mild disease. And we expanded the T-cells against membrane, spike, nuclear capsid and envelope. And what we showed was in these convalescent donors, you could reliably expand uh, SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells, predominantly targeting spike and membrane and to a lesser extent, nuclear capsid. But really the dominant response was to a hotspot in membrane. And this is important because obviously the current vaccines are predominantly targeting spike. And so it does raise some interest that if the natural immunity is really targeted to a conserved region of membrane and, and spike is the target for the vaccines, and we know that spike is vulnerable to mutations, whereas membrane, it seems to be less vulnerable, then it does pose the question um, when we're developing these um, approaches, preventative and treatment approaches, that involving um, membrane targeting may be prudent. So right now we're about to um, submit our clinical trial to the FDA using uh, T cells targeting spike membrane and nuclear capsid that we're going to generate from uh, healthy bone marrow transplant donors uh, and give these to patients after bone marrow transplant as a, a preventative strategy or as a treatment approach. So finally, I do want to highlight the importance of developing this sort of T-cell therapy targeting SARS-CoV-2 as a treatment 
We know that with the recent um, mutations that are currently spreading globally, in particular the so-called UK strain and the uh, South African strain, which appear more virulent, uh, we know that certainly in the UK variant that this variant developed in an immunosuppressed patient who was unable to clear the virus. And it does appear that prolonged shedding of the virus in individuals who are unable to clear the virus because they lack robust T cell immunity to clear the virus is contributing to the development of these mutant strains. So by developing a T cell therapy to treat these immune suppressed patients to prevent this prolonged shedding may actually have an impact globally to prevent the occurrence of ongoing more virulent mutant strains. The broadening applicability of T cell therapy for SARS-CoV-2 is going to need uh, industry interest. Um, we know that we can give uh, virus-specific T cells as an off-the-shelf therapeutic. So this would lend itself nicely to a commercialization model. So I could see that um, there is potential to develop a SARS-CoV-2 T-cell therapy that would have uh, more of a global impact than just treating at a few boutique centres.